Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, the last video that I posted was the iPhone 13 Pro versus the Canon R6 in regards to using 60 frames per second footage. And I got a lot of flack from it, to be honest with you, and I was surprised. It was funny. Um, it seemed like a lot of the people on the um, R6 forums that I posted on seemed a little bit, you know, upset that I would even compare the two of them and that they were just a little bit upset, it seemed like. And one of the weird things was, one of the big things they complained about was the fact that I didn't make the video in 60 frames per second. They were upset that it was a 24 frames per second video and that I had then used the 60 frames per second footage and slowed it down to 40% to make it match that 24 frames per second timeline. And, you know, I used it as B-roll and I was shooting, you know, slow motion B-roll um, coming from both my R6 and the iPhone 13 Pro. So it was slowed down to 40% and for some reason they felt that you couldn't compare the footage because I had slowed it down to 40% and that changes the footage apparently. I mean it does change the footage obviously, it changes the rate at the speed is playing back so it's dreamy slow motion b-roll but I just kind of didn't understand that because you know it's b-roll footage that's why we shoot in 60p is so that we can you know use it as b-roll footage not so we can display it at 60 frames per second so that was one thing that i found a little bit weird i didn't really understand the criticism but you know okay um but the other thing was that people were very upset that i didn't really push the limitations of the iphone and i guess that is more you know a criticism that i can understand because what i did was i was out shooting a waterfall where there was really good light so yeah the sensor wasn't being pushed you know to the point where you would see a lot of noise coming out of it where you know obviously that's where a full frame sensor is going to surpass the abilities of the iphone so i do understand that criticism a little bit more but you know i it was it was just surprising to me how upset the uh, r6 community or the photography community seemed to be by this video so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to make a better video that will hopefully make them a little more happy, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, basically the same thing. Now I'm still going to shoot at 60p. I'm still going to slow it down to 40% because I will still be shooting like I do with all of my videos, 24 frames per second, like I am right now. And the timeline will be 24 frames per second, so the 60p footage that you will be viewing will be slowed down to 40% to match the frame rate in my timeline. But what we're going to do is find some more dynamic kind of scenes or maybe some more low light scenes so that I'm really pushing the ISO a little bit higher. And let's see how the iPhone footage holds up with the R6 in a higher ISO scenario. All right, guys, so found another place to do a little test with the iPhone 13 Pro and the Canon R6. So it's a misty little morning out here on Crystal Lake, so the lighting's not that good. So let's go outside and we're going to record the mountains with all the fog and the mist and see how the R6 and the iPhone 13 Pro perform. Okay guys, so I'm out on the boat driving around and I think I actually got some good opportunities to take some nice contrasty shots, looking down the lake, watching the water just kind of like sparkle around. Again, shooting at 60 frames per second, but being slowed down to 40% to match the 24 frames per second timeline. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I think I did a good job of getting some more contrasty shots and some lower light shots. So we're going to see the Canon R6 sensor being pushed a little bit further as far as ISO values. And we're going to see how the iPhone 13 Pro held up. As well as I actually did bring out my ND filter. So it is on my 24mm lens on the R6. So I was also shooting at f2.8. So I was creating a nice shallow cinematic depth of field for some of the shots around my girlfriend while she was fishing. And then tried to do the same shots but using the iPhone 13 Pro. So it's going to be interesting to see how it handled those scenes to see how the blurriness or how cinematic it looks coming off from the iPhone 13 Pro versus the Canon R6. So that's going to be interesting and I can't wait to get back, get it on the computer and check it out. All right guys, so after coming back, manipulating the footage and checking it out, I can definitely see that there's a big advantage to using the R6 still, but that being said, it's really impressive what the iPhone is able to pull off. Now, when I went out there in the mist and the rain, where the conditions were less favorable, that's where you started to see the iPhone really struggle. One, it really struggled with the white balance. It seemed to shift the colors over to the green or yellows and it just wasn't retaining any of the really pretty oranges that were there in real life that the Canon R6 was able to retain. Now, some of that's due to the fact that when you're looking at the footage from the iPhone 13 Pro, that's just straight up what's coming out of the iPhone. And what I mean by that is I just pointed, shot the image, and I took that footage out and put it there, and that's what you're seeing. Where with the Canon R6, I'm shooting in C-Log3, so I'm having to color correct that with a LUT, and then tweak the image based on what I'm seeing and what I think the scene needs to my liking. So there's a lot more work involved in the post-production of using the Canon R6. But that being said, there's a big advantage to having that. So, of course, the iPhone 13 Pro is never going to replace something like a Canon R6. But that being said, it is super impressive the quality that you can get when the lighting conditions are favorable to the iPhone 13 Pro. And that's just like a really cool thing to be able to do with a cell phone now. So guys, again, if you think this helped you in any way, think about going below, subscribing, clicking the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on my next video.